Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the owner of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Fiona Scott, a journalist, owner of a PR company, has been in PR and journalism for over 35 years, and she's had her own PR company for 15 years, Fiona Scott PR. And we are going to be talking to her about her involvement in awards because Fiona has been involved as a judge, as an entrant and won awards, as a sponsor. So also working with clients, writing award entries and encouraging them to enter awards and obviously promoting award wins. So there is so much Fiona knows about the awards industry. So I'm delighted to have her here today. Hello, Fiona. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me on, Debbie. It's great to be here. So, Fiona, let's we always like to talk a little bit about the journey. So let's start with, you know, how did you get into journalism in the first place? Well, it all started on a very sort of fairly dull summer's day in a little Somerset town of Radstock when a teenager wearing jeans and a white t-shirt was wandering across the road and realised that uh, there was a TV crew filming. That teenager was me and the uh, TV crew were filming about the closure of the steam railway line through Radstock and I met a journalist called Andrew Harvey and I just had one of those light bulb moments that happened once or twice maybe in a lifetime and I instantly thought that is what I want to do. Fantastic so you obviously went into working in TV and tell us a bit about that and what, what you were doing. Okay, well, initially, I actually trained to be a teacher because after that seminal moment, my mum joyously told me that I could never be a journalist because oh. I, I was far too sensitive. So I trained to be a teacher, hated it. And during that postgrad year, I applied for loads of jobs in TV and journalism. I sort of went back, defaulted back to that earlier dream. So I had this feeling that I needed to hone my skills in local newspapers. I don't know where that came from. I had no experience of uh, local newspapers, but that's what I did. So I worked in local newspapers for five years, did uh, radio with Hospital Radio as a volunteer for two of those years. And then I was headhunted into regional television for ITV, where I worked for 13 years. And um, although we were based out of Bristol, I made hundreds of local TV programmes. We also were very embedded with the national press. So I was involved in making uh, national programmes for Channel 4, Channel 4 News, the Dispatches series. And um, it was lovely. I absolutely loved it. There wasn't a day that I didn't love it. And I have continued to do some of that, even as a freelancer, um, because TV is uh, my first love I am extremely visual mm. so um, I think of stories in pictures and in video and it's a big part of what I do so what made you take the leap then from employment into running your own PR company um, I would never have done it if I'm honest Debbie I had no business experience whatsoever nobody in my family had run a business the thought of it actually made me want to be sick the uncertainty of it but I was made redundant um, in uh, I knew of it in 2008. It actually happened early 2009. I was one of a thousand people across ITV. And um, I just had choices to make with four children at home. If I wanted to stay in TV, I was going to have to be either in London, Manchester, Cardiff, all of the time, because they're the massive TV hubs. And I thought, you know, loads of my friends are freelance. If I don't try now to see if I can make it on my own, I'll never try. Mm. I was 42. And so I did with zero business experience. And therefore, um, I launched into a period of time of making a ton of mistakes. Hmm. But I think at that time, I certainly remember 2009, it was a time when the Internet was taking off, social media was taking off. And the whole way that we consumed media was starting to change. So I'm sure you made a lot of mistakes, but I guess it was it was evolving, wasn't it, at that time? I think it was. And it took me a while to realise that I was. I was actually quite good at the business side once I started to learn what that actually meant, because it is a separate skill from your original skill set. Mm -hmm. um, and. 
I did innately understand that social media was going to be a very powerful tool mm -hmm. and I embraced it. And a lot of people in the journalism sector did not embrace it at that time. They saw it as a threat, just like they see AI as a threat now. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm much more of the mindset is these things aren't perfect. They evolve. They are opportunities. And I agree. I believe that about AI right now, mm. and I believe that about social media then. So I try to develop a really positive mindset of saying there's a world of opportunity out there. You know, which which bits will work for me? How can I create a bit of income for myself and understand I'm not an expert in all of this stuff? Mm. I just have certain skills and certain experiences that I can bring to the table. Yeah, fantastic. So let's talk a bit about awards. When did awards sort of first appear on your radar? Um, actually, really quickly, um, because I'd because I'd worked in newspapers and I'd been business editor of my local newspaper now in Swindon for an, uh, probably a couple of years. I learned really quickly that good uh, press relation if, involves doing stuff and talking about the stuff you're doing. So when you scope out a year in your diary of what you're doing, there are some things that will occur and be really obvious. And then there are months where there's not much happening. And I've quickly identified that awards can fill a gap like that. They, they, they serve several purposes. They give you something to talk about, something to write about, particularly if you're shortlisted um, and then you win. They're also brilliant for visibility uh, for the people in the room that you can be visible to and credibility is really important uh, they build a bank of credibility however what I would say Debbie is there are a lot of awards opportunities out there that simply aren't credible mm. um, and I do think you need to do some due diligence around that we see it all the time you suddenly get an email to say you've won an award and you think well that's weird I didn't even enter one um, and you grasp onto that and then find there are a load of hidden costs mm. they, and they, those people don't care whether you're actually good at what you do. They just find you through a school of the Internet. Mm. So I do think that awards are incredibly valuable, but be picky and do a bit of due diligence. So you've obviously um, got quite a breadth of experience of awards. So you've entered awards for yourself? Yes, I have. Um or been nominated by others. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna lie about this, as a sort of sole trader, owner managed business where I just employ myself, many, many awards don't cater for people like me. And there'll be a whole load of freelancers, self-employed stroke owner managed business owners out there who will feel the same. Mm -hmm. We feel like we can't compete with businesses that uh, owners who wanna scale up, who've got multi-million pound turnover, who employ lots of people, all of which is good. But that just isn't my dream and wasn't my goal. Mm. And there are a whole load of us that have felt very excluded. It's a drum I've banged on a few times. Mm. But where I have fit, I have um, entered awards because, as I've said, I can't tell my clients or anyone I'm training to enter awards and not be prepared to do the same myself. Mm. I think I've got to walk my talk. Mm. So I've entered many awards. I've not won many, many awards and I've won two. Um, and I'm very proud of the awards that I've won. Mm, which is great because actually the process of entering is always very good anyway, because it kind of gives you that chance to have a look at your business from all those different angles, which is one of the things I'm always bashing on about. And I totally agree about awards for smaller companies because um, we set up our awards really to aim for those types of businesses. And we've obviously got the solopreneur category this year, which you're sponsoring. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's coming across now that you're a real champion of solopreneurs. Yeah, and I, that's why I leapt on the opportunity to sponsor it, Debbie, because I want to support people like me. 15 mm -hmm. years ago, there was very little support for someone mm -hmm. starting out who had modest dreams like me very little there was uh, hardly any free business stuff and when you don't know anything about business you tend to, to invest what little money you have in the wrong things mm -hmm. so you invest I invested on learning how to use the latest camera um learning how to use the latest editing software when really I should have been investing in running a business mm -hmm which is a different thing. So um, I'm really up for supporting anyone who's starting a business now. And also that leap of faith, that first step is the greatest step you'll take, mm -hmm. no matter how big your business ends up in the end. That day when you sit with your laptop and your phone at your kitchen table thinking, 
what the hell am I going to do next? And who the hell is going to pay me anything? That is the biggest and most difficult step in my view. No, it is. It is. I mean, my business evolved 25 years ago. I didn't intend to have a business, but it kind of just evolved. And I totally get where you're coming from because it is tough. And it is tough if you don't want to scale. And many people don't want to scale. They don't want to have the responsibility of high office costs and big teams and the stress of trying to do that. They want to just work for themselves, earn some money and get a good reputation out there. So judging, you've done some judging for awards. Mm. Haven't you? So yeah. when you're judging awards, what are the sort of things that you're looking for? Um, well, I'm looking for the brief of what's gone out in advance um because that's that's a fair way to do it what the award organizers have put out as the categories and the criteria so i'm looking for people to have actually taken the time to have read what that is and to answer the question properly i'm not quite hung up on word count though if you're asked to supply 300 words and you supply 3000 i mean really you know 10 percent either way i'm quite forgiving and then i will look at the backstory and and the journey, uh, if you like. So for me, it's not about, you know, if you've inherited a two million pound turnover business from your parents and you've got it to, um, you know, 2,200,000 turnover, I'm not inclined to think that that's a better journey than someone who starts from scratch Mm. and gets to 50,000 turnover or 100,000 turnover. Uh, I think you've got to look at the criteria You've got to look at the purpose. You've got to look at the story and uh, the information provided by the candidate or the people nominating someone. Mm. Um, I'm looking for other things that uh, make you more than your business. Do you go the extra mile? Do you care? Are mm. you ethical? Um, mm. What puts me off and will uh, sort of is a tick is stuff that is boastful and arrogant and not supported, <laughs> uh, in fact, or people that say I'm a really sustainable business without actually any due diligence. This is a big one right now around mm -hmm. sustainability. So things like for everything I do, I pay to plant a tree. Well, actually, do you know about 95 percent of trees that are planted don't actually reach maturity. So bring no benefit to the environment. Mm -hmm. So don't just quack about what you think is good stuff. You need to actually um, prove it. And provide proof mm. so those are the things i'm looking for um and i want to be emotionally challenged i want to feel it i want to know that you care about your business for yourself for your clients for your suppliers and i want that application to show me that yeah and i think that's what some of our judges say they they'll put comments like this entry made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because it was just so special or it made me emotional. You know, when we we used to do physical judging days, we don't now, it's all done remotely. But you'd sometimes get judges sort of welling up in tears because they'd read something and it was just made them really like emotional. So I think, yeah, it's got to evoke a bit of emotion, hasn't it? And the passion's yeah. got to come across. Yeah. So you obviously work with businesses that have won awards. So if a business has won an award and they come to you and say, Fiona, can you help me? get some publicity on this. Um, what do you think the media are looking for? Okay, well, what I would say with awards is mostly it's a local or regional business story only. Mm. Um, because there are so many wards out there but what you've got to do actually the conversation should begin at the point you enter the award mm -hmm. because it it's a process and a journey to make the most of it you need to be engaged before the award ceremony mm -hmm. you need to be connecting with others that have taken the time to enter as well um, particularly those who are shortlisted you need to have a plan for the night yeah. Um, uh, to engage and connect with people about how to make that work. And if I know you do, but if um, the organisers do preliminary events on or offline, try and engage with that because you're then you're connecting with people in the room before you've got in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, and make that part of your strategy and you have to be prepared when you enter that room to win and lose with grace and, and dignity because someone's got to win and that all isn't always going to be you and it, it may be that the margins are really small mm. and you know and I've had this I, I've been nominated as a, a female entrepreneur of the year several times and the first time it happens I'm, I'm not going to lie 
I really thought I'd win it and I didn't. And I was totally gutted. And I, I wanted to go to the bathroom, scream and shout and just leave the room. <laughs> um, but it taught me a lesson in actually we have to be able to fail with mm. grace mm. because it's still an opportunity. Mm. We've still been shortlisted and we wouldn't have been shortlisted if we were rubbish. No, that's what I always say. Totally. You know, uh, and um, and sometimes we'll win and sometimes we won't. And that's OK. And that's why I always say to people, if you want to be awards to be part of your PR process, your marketing process, you want that credibility, then you have to plan for winning and losing mm. and and be good in both of those scenarios, because you'll probably lose more than you'll win. Do you think. um journalists generally are interested in people if they've won an award because it demonstrates credibility yeah well, yes um what happens is the, it's not the moment of winning the award um by all means shout about it send it out to your local media with a decent photograph and another thing with the awards this is a really big thing you need to really pay attention that awards will give you professional photographs of you receiving your awards that are actually usable mm -hmm. and not in low purple light which often happens for evening awards. Uh, they need to have a space, usually outside the main room or in a well-lit area of a main room where you get those photographs and you get them in a timely manner, get those that award story out there. Um, write a blog about why you did it, what you learned from it, maybe a number of blogs, probably three quite easily. And then when you do contact journalists or you get the opportunity to be say in national press, they're gonna research you. And are they going to use a case study of someone who's won an award in the last two or three years, that's a credible award, or someone that doesn't even appear on the internet? Mm -hmm. um, you give them confidence to use you because what that says is I'm a serious business person. I take my business seriously. I'm willing to invest in it. I'm willing to shout about it. Uh, therefore, I'm media friendly. And you are going to be head and shoulders above the nine other women or men in business that have put themselves forward, but have actually done nothing. Mm, exactly. And I think that's really true. Um, the thing I like about you, Fiona, is that you get very heavily involved in your business community, don't you? Yeah, I do. And you network and you're quite well known and you've really made that one of your top targets, I think. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a bit about that. Well, uh, one, um, I'm an extrovert um, in my personality. So um, I need people around me who are my buddies. I physically need that. So if you think of the pandemic, that was awful for me because although I love my family dearly and there were five of us and we were all fine and we didn't get COVID at that time, got it afterwards, um, that was all lovely. I missed that support mm. um, horribly. And when we could go for walks, it would be business buddies I would go for walks with. So for, for me, I need, and that taught me even more than, I need people around me who are business people. They give me energy and they inspire me. But equally... I want to be seen in my business community as a serious business person, even though I'm a one woman band. Yeah. And equally, there's another thing. Your best media are the media that are physically close to you. Mm -hmm. They just are. Yeah. And I always start with every single client of mine. If a, if a client comes to me and says, I want national coverage, I'll walk away. <laughs> I'll just walk away because they fail to realize how the national press work. The national press is on local press they mm. scour local press they get confidence from coverage you've had in local press so this is your bread and butter mm. so this comes back to me walking my walk um i appear on local bbc radio a lot if i can do it and usually i'm on a monthly basis talking about something i embrace my local daily newspaper i'm uh, an ambassador for uh, local community radio i know the local tv journalists really well um they are all personal friends which i've built up over time and there's no reason any business owner cannot develop those relationships themselves in their own community and also the, the lines are blurred now between what is local and what is global because you can share stories on the internet so mm -hmm. easily yeah, and yeah. suddenly everything is global. Are we, we completely underestimate the value of the connections we already have. Yeah. And I think that's so true. And I, I almost think PR is a little bit like a tree 
you know, you start with the roots, you can grow locally, you can then get some more regional and then you can get national. I mean, it took me, I was in Women and Home magazine, but I'd had my business about 12 years by then. You know, yeah. it's not an easy thing that, that, that and they have their set schedules of what they're looking for and they do their research. So, you know, it's it's tricky. Um, you've got a podcast as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, uh, uh, probably mentioned that I'm a visual person. So podcasts weren't first on my list. Um, first on my list was to do a YouTube channel, but I actually do that privately with my husband about our caravan adventures and it's great fun um but yeah I thought it was um during in 2021 I thought you know I ought to do a podcast it's a free resource because I actually passionately believe that every business owner has to do PR I've probably met one business in 15 years who I actually said don't do PR <laughs> and that's because their main client was the Ministry of Defence so they couldn't talk about it mm -hmm. and I said but the danger for them was if the Ministry of Defence cancelled the contract with them they would have no business whatsoever so good luck Mm. um but anyway um therefore it it I feel it's I have a responsibility to share stories about PR and also my sector has a lot of bullshit frankly <laughs> putting it honestly um you know it, you can waste a lot of money in, on PR if you don't stand understand what it is and you don't have a modicum of knowledge you can throw a lot of money at people who pr make you false promises and, and it drives me around about my sector so I thought I'd start a podcast called PR not BS with Fiona Scott and a huge number of my guests are journalists national journalists tv producers and we talk about pr and how to engage with business owners the good the bad the ugly and I, obviously i speak to loads of business owners including clients and um you know it is a bit of an excuse just to have amazing conversations but we do talk i try and share a lot of knowledge and share show people that uh, a lot of people in the pr industry talk BS when it comes to engaging with the media they've never worked in the media they've not had a serious career in the media they have no idea what the media is actually looking for so I'm putting it out there and saying okay here you go listen to it at your leisure it will cost you nothing to do so but at least do that before you spend and commit a penny well, we will add the link to the show notes for the podcast. We'll certainly add the link when this goes onto our YouTube channel as well. So people can go and have a little listen because I've listened to a few episodes and it's really good. It's really interesting. Mm, thank you. So we always like to end with a little tip. I mean, you have actually given away so much information, <laughs> so many tips. But if someone's listening to this and they're on their sort of first couple of years journey of their business, um, that tends to be a lot of the listeners of our podcast. What would you advise them to do just one thing okay well I would just say um because this is what I did though it took me three or four years to work out I needed to do it um when you're early on in your business um I've already said the hardest thing is to build and to get to 20 30 40 50k turnover uh, my biggest tip is then learn how to sell mm good point uh, take a course selling is a skill it's a separate skill it's separate to pr it's separate to awards it's separate to all of those things learn how to sell find a course that's good invest in that and uh that is what will take you from being a successful freelancer to being a successful business owner thank you that's amazing well thank you for joining me today it's been really interesting talking to you and if you're listening to the podcast and you're thinking about entering awards, go and have a listen to Fiona's podcast, as well as have a look at all the resources that we've got on this podcast and on our website. So thanks for joining me today. Thank, Thank you very much for inviting me, Debbie. Thank, Thank you. you.